Nexus Conference 2021. Did you come to give God praise? Did you come to give Him glory on a Friday night? Did you come to lift your hands? Now here's the thing about Nexus. Let's define Nexus really quickly. It's a link. It's a tie. But really the first word when you look up Nexus in the dictionary, it's a connection. It's a connection. So there's been some preaching that has gone forth, powerful preaching, life-changing preaching. And I believe there is a generation that's here tonight that you are not going to wait. And see, let me, let me, let me back up. There's a, there's a couple different kind of connections. You can have a one gig connection. You could have a 10 gig connection. You could have a fiber optic connection. Once you get into that fiber territory, things move really fast. And I just believe there's a generation of people here tonight, young people, that you're not going to wait six months when you get home to fall in line with what your pastor is saying. You're not going to wait for yet another conference. You're not going to wait for the perfect situation, the perfect setting, the perfect set of circumstances. But you're going to say, Pastor, I don't need a mic. I don't need a position. I'm here to work. Give me a mop. Give me a job. Give me something to do. I'll be a praiser. I'll be someone that'll just make it in the prayer room. I'll keep the prayer room hot. Is there a generation of people that's, that'll say that? That'll say, I'll lift my hands. I'll start right now. Start right now. Hallelujah. Start right now and say, Lord, use me. Lord, take me. Lord, mold me. Hallelujah. I'm ready right now, Lord, to be used. Close your eyes. Lift your hands. Give God praise right now. In Jesus' name. Can you keep those hands put together in just a moment? Are you thankful to be in the house of God? Aren't you thankful that you know He's a mighty God? Do you know He's a mighty God tonight? I wonder if you can help us sing this. Can you just say, He's a mighty God? I couldn't hear you. Can you just say, He's a mighty God? Say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Lord, Oh 
We have heard, I have heard for many years, this term, I'm waiting for revival. I can't wait to see what God's going to do. I've heard it said, I can't wait to see how God's going to use me. As I was praying a while ago, I just felt something different right now. I feel like there's a generation of people in this room and listening and watching tonight. They're not waiting for revival. They're at the gate saying, God, let's have revival. We're walking in revival. We're walking and doing things for God. No, I'm not saying I'm waiting to see what God's going to do. I'm already watching what God is doing. We're not waiting for revival. We're walking in revival. Come on. I believe what Nexus represents is a generation of young people that's not going to sit around and wait. No, pastor. I'm going to have revival with you right now. No, pastor. I'm going to knock doors right now. No, pastor. I'm going to teach a Bible study right now. We're not waiting. We're having. We're not waiting. We're doing. Amen. Amen. I was out of town last week and my son texted me. Dad, we knocked 174 doors. I'm thinking, oh boy, I'm going to get a call from the city council. Dad, how many did you have out knocking doors? 37. But you know what? Not one negative response. 174 doors. You know what my young people are saying? We're tired of waiting. We're ready to do something. We want to teach a Bible study. We want to knock on the door. Devil world, here we come. Let's have revival. Hallelujah. Come on, let's clap our hands to the Lord together. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Come on, let's lift our hands and turn our hearts to the Lord together right now. We love you, Jesus. God, we're believing you for greater. Oh, we believe in you for greater. No fear, cause I believe there is no doubt, cause I have seen your faithfulness, my fortress over and over.
thought of abundantly more than we ask a thing lord you will never fail your name is powerful your work's unstoppable all things are possible in you
place. Lift your hands. Come on, how many of you will dare to believe again? How many of you will dare to trust God again? They're going to sing it again, and as they begin to sing, I want you to lift your hand right now and worship. Say, God, I'm going to believe you again. Come on, I'm going to trust you again. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah, Jesus' name. Come on, that's it. Go ahead and believe it for it tonight. I know you're not done with me yet, God. wonderful wonderful presence of the lord is in this service tonight in nexus 2021 how many are you glad you're here tonight and how many of you believe god's not done and that he has more for us this evening amen god bless you as you make your way back to your seats we'd like to ask our ushers to get ready to receive our offering this evening and as we mentioned last night our offerings are going towards uh, missions works home and foreign so please know that you're giving all of it last night and tonight is going directly towards those how many of you enjoyed the preaching and the teaching last night and today amen it's been a great time just a few announcements before the ushers come we want to make it mention again this evening that after service this evening for all of our town out of town guests and our in town guests and ministry and family now for our out of town guests and local guests, it's from ages 15 to 35 because this conference is about that age group and then all of our ministry. We want to invite you down to the gym for a meal and a time of fellowship. Man, wasn't that food good last night? Amen. The fellowship was better, but man, it was good food last night. 
we want to invite you down there. And as a way of, of Durham, the local church, thanking you, we want uh, you to know our out-of-town guests and uh, ministry and family that we want you to go first. So please, as service is dismissed this evening, make your way down there. We want to get everybody served. And then, of course, the local folk here in Durham will eat. But we want to thank you for coming and being our guests here at this conference. Durham, aren't we glad they came to be with us? Now, for those of you that uh, did not fall into those categories, there is still hope. And uh, outside in front of the nursery tonight, there will be 300 plates to go available for you at no cost. So listen, whether you like tacos or not, which I can't imagine anybody in this world doesn't like tacos. Because that's what they're serving at the marriage supper of the Lamb. We, us Hispanics, we know that. So get used to it. But even if you don't like tacos, it's free of charge. And you can't beat that anywhere in a COVID era. Amen? Amen. God bless you. So please be aware of that. We do have some exciting announcements to make everyone aware of. Everybody say October 26th through 28th. East Coast Conference. Yes, we are still planning on having East Coast Conference this year. East Coast Conference is always a great time for this local church, great time of impacting ministry, and we are looking forward to that. And we are excited to announce for the first time, October 26th through 28th is the East Coast Conference in English. October 29th and 30 is our first East Coast Conference in Spanish, and we are excited about that. We're believing God for two great days of outpouring in ministry. And then, how many of you enjoyed Nexus this year? Well, plan on coming back next year, January 26th and 20 through 28th of 2022. We'll be doing Nexus all over again. It'll be bigger. It'll be greater. It'll be, it'll be exciting. Hey, listen, mark your calendar for these events. We want our out-of-town guests to come and be a part of the great things that God's doing. And finally, as our ushers prepare, we want to make everyone aware of Biblos Network. Uh, Biblos Network is, an, is a uh, YouTube channel that uh, Pastor Urshan and myself, I'm doing it in Spanish, he's doing it in English, we're inviting guests, we're talking about the Word of God, there are Bible studies talking about the oneness of God, uh, I know our last uh, Biblos en Español, we, we tackled third culture, uh, the third culture syndrome, and that's very relevant for those Spanish-speaking people in this country, so we're dealing with relevant topics in society and culture, we're talking about doctrine, we're talking about exciting things, and also on there are Bible studies, so the beautiful thing about Biblos is this, Say you're sitting in Starbucks, and you don't feel really competent maybe explaining the oneness of God or some of the things that were, you're new in church, and you, and you just you, you feel led by God to witness to somebody. Real simple. Just pop open your phone. Tell, go talk to those people. Say, hey, why don't you take a moment and look at this real quick? It'll just take a few moments. Hey, listen, through that, they can hear about baptism in Jesus' name. They can feel, hear about the infilling of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking other tongues. Biblos is making a difference. We're getting thousands of views every week. And we have new content coming out every single Thursday. So please, it's B-I-B-L-O-S. And Biblos is Greek for the book. And we know that the book is the Bible, the Word of God. Amen. Thank you very much. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your kindness and your blessings, for the opportunity to give to your kingdom, Lord. We know that you are faithful to us, toward us in everything we do. You give back to us in abundance. Now, Father, we ask you to bless this offering. Use it for your glory. Bless missionaries all across this nation and world. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you this evening as you give. Come on, while you're pre preparing to give, why don't you stand to your feet with us tonight? Come on, how many knows that we are a people called by the name of Jesus? And how many knows that when you call on that name, something amazing begins to happen in the atmosphere? Why don't you just begin this night calling on the name that is above every other name? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Something happens when I call your name. 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 Say, come on, do you believe it tonight?
you stepped in here with a need tonight, if you'll call on the name of Jesus, we believe the need will be supplied. Oh, yeah.
Bible says that David danced before the Lord with all of his might. I want somebody to dance in the Holy Ghost tonight. But here you are in 2021, and God is still on the throne. My, 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 my. move on but I just feel like the Holy Ghost is just the Bible said it would break out on your right hand and on your left hand Give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight. Ah, give him a hand clap of praise. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. That means everybody in the room. That means from the back, to the front, from the side, to the side. Oh, ye people. And then he says, shout. Anybody still got a shout left? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Find a seat. Amen. We're going to move on to the next part of the service. We could do this all night long. And we might. We might wind up doing just that. But anybody that said the church is dead has never been to an apostolic church before. So I don't know about that, Brother Urshan. Y'all are a little wild. You remember back when you were in the club? You remember when you were running the streets and you were drinking it and snorting it and shooting it and running around all night? You remember those days, right? Well, don't you dry up on me when you come in church. Come on, don't you forget what God has done for you now. He brought me out.
Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. There's a wonderful, wonderful atmosphere. I feel miracle signs and wonders in this house. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When God's people start praising him, you don't know what's going to happen. Woo! You don't know what's going to break out when somebody starts calling on the name. And I call him Jehovah. I call him the first. I call him the last. I call him the wonderful. And I call him the counselor. I call him the mighty God. But when I really want to get his attention, I, I call him Jesus. Jehovah's salvation. Praise God, praise God. You can be seated. We've had a wonderful time here over the last, the course of the last two days. Didn't we have a wonderful time last night? The Holy Ghost was here. The preaching of the Word of God was such a strength. And, and today we had some wonderful sessions. We had several people that um, were impacted. I'm so thankful for it. And question and answer sessions. This is a question asking generation. And, and I don't want to be sitting here saying, well, just do what I say. I want to point you to the chapter, the verse, the Word of God. I want people... The Bible says that they that do know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits. And I believe that with all of my heart. I want to thank everybody that has come. If you are visiting with us, welcome to FPC tonight. Welcome to Nexus Conference. I know you have a busy schedule. I know this was put together in a few weeks. I know that we were still wrestling with COVID dynamics and it's weird. But Jesus is still in the healing business. He's still in the saving business. And we're so glad you came. We're glad you came to exalt the name of the Lord. I want to thank our, our workers that have worked so hard. There's many people behind the scenes that took the last few weeks. They painted. They cleaned. They worked. Um, I could call names. Sister Carol, Brother Michael, um, Brother Brian, just a host of workers and I'm glad my sister, Kristen, is here. She helped out and worked so hard this week, visiting from Indianapolis, Indiana, and, and so many people. They just put in hours, our, our, our musicians, our singers. Praise God. How many enjoy that worship tonight? Man, I felt the Holy Ghost moving in this place. I felt like putting my shouting shoes on. Brother Evan Grizzle from Wilmington, North Carolina, dynamic pastor of a dynamic church. We love you. We appreciate you. Brother Dave Howell. Um, from Shelbyville, Indiana, and Brother Nixon Dowdy over here on the keys came in to help us out, and, and Brother Jeremy back there on the synthesizer, God bless you, my friend, and Sister Cheyenne, all these workers and the singers that are here in Durham, we love and appreciate them. Let's give them a hand clap of appreciation for working so hard. Brother Holmes, thank you so much for preaching to us last night. You spoke to this generation. We love and appreciate Bishop Joel Holmes. He is a voice that I want this generation to hear, and none of this would happen without Bishop Johnny Godare. Bishop Godare, we love you and appreciate you tonight. Amen. FPC Durham is here because of your burden and your vision. We love you. We appreciate you tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Remain standing. I would love to have every one of these people come and greet you because they could all do it in world-class fashion. But all of our ministers, we're glad you're here. We love you, appreciate you. But tonight, I want to flow with the Holy Ghost. And I don't want to bog it down. I know I can feel when the unction is upon us. And, and tonight, we have a preacher. As you know, my brother Joel Urshan was slated to preach tonight, and he was unfortunately not able to do so. He did contract COVID-19. It is one of the hazards of this day. He sent his love and his apologies. He wants to do it again another time. And so we were, we were very sad. But then we found out Brother Matt Tuttle could come to preach for us. And God gave us the balm of Gilead. <laughs> to restore, and, and Brother Tuttle, 
who pastors a dynamic church in Bider, Texas. They're experiencing great revival. I met Brother Tuttle several years ago at a conference, and I was so impressed with his spirit, and I was impressed with the anointing that's on his life. And, and he won't say this, so I'm going to say it. He pastored, and it was at Dordrecht. And, and they say that, that the environment that you're in molds you and shapes you, but I believe that in the kingdom of God, we are called to take dominion over our environment. And Pastor Matt Tuttle not only thrived in Europe, but he fought the secularism of Europe. And anybody that says you can't have revival in Europe has never met Pastor Matt Tuttle. He came against that spirit with fire and revival, and they had miracle signs and wonders. And I have watched him. I've worshiped the Lord with him. Thank God for his ministry. And I love and appreciate him. He came on a second's notice to help us, and he'll never know what that means to me. So, Brother Tuttle, we want you to come and take your liberty. Let the Lord use you tonight. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Love you. Thank you. What a privilege and high honor it is to be here tonight in the presence of the Lord. As you turn in your Bibles to John chapter 2, we will quickly to read from verse 7 as you turn there I was coming down the road to the church and I saw the traffic jam of all the people that were leaving and going out of the parking lot lined up I thought oh they must have figured out Brother Urshan's not preaching so I'm really glad some of y'all stayed because my wife's looking online and she'd like to see some people out there and uh she said, you can't preach as good as Joel Urshan, but you can preach shorter than he can. <laughs> so, I don't know how long he preaches, but that must mean I need to be short. I'm going to try to do that. But I'm really honored to be here tonight, and, and uh, I, I look and esteem your pastor, Brother Urshan, his family. How blessed you are to have a man of God and a family, his wife and kids, sons, that are admired by their generation, and I honor them. I honor uh, your bishop, of course, Brother Godair. As a young boy, um, I was, as already been made mention to, I was raised in the Netherlands, and uh, we came by on deputation. And Brother Godair uh, had us and took my dad out and me to lunch. And I remember I just sat there and watched him. I was like, man, I'm having lunch with Johnny Godair, the Johnny Godair. And now I got to sit next to him on the platform and preach at his church. Man, dreams come true. Amen. Wow. <laughs> young people, give yourself, give your... Give your life to Jesus, and it'll take you so far. The great saints of this church, Brother Holmes, I honor him, man of God. My friends that are here tonight, ministry, and the great church, the people of God. Thank you. Thank you for your kindness and the nice basket. It was like, I'm only here for one night. It was like the ark of Noah's ark. So I just gave the guys the front, front desk and said, y'all have that, and then go to church. <laughs> And uh, so they're, they're very blessed. They're also thankful. John chapter 2, verse 7, if you're there, say amen. Amen. Man, y'all could y'all, the last thing y'all needed was me. Y'all could have just shouted all night. I'll tell you, when we get to that place at my church, I don't preach. I'm like, thank you, Lord, for the night off. I ain't even going to lie. I get excited a little bit. And uh, I thought it was going to happen again, but y'all y'all, y'all are with, I don't know. John chapter 2, verse 7. Here we go. Let's try. You'll probably regret it. That's all I'm going to say. You're going to regret it. Jesus saith unto them, fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was... But the servant which drew the water knew the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. And he saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine till now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Canaan of Galilee, and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. For the next few moments... Uh, I will take your time, and I'm going to take a career risk and do something I've never done before. I'm going to, midway through the message or so, let one of these young men give the title to my message. So, taking a career risk, but I think you'll do a good job. All right. Lord, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for what you've done. You're in this room. We have already praised you. We have lifted you up, and you're president. 
is made evident, Lord. And the fact that we can feel and sense you now, Lord, that we know that you are here and realize that. I pray, Lord, that your word would come and move us past realization into revelation. That not only are you here in our midst, but you desire to work amongst us. And Father, when you're ready, move us from revelation to demonstration and pour out your spirit. Uh, signs, wonders, and miracles. The bodies that are sick, let them leave healed. Uh, Father, I pray the spirits that need strength would be fine strength in your joy. Uh, I pray, Lord, that whatever you do, we would leave changed by the power of your word. And when it's done, we will always give you praise. And everybody said in Jesus' name. Why don't you just put your hands together right where you are. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Somebody shout Jesus. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. There is an attitude that is coming into the church that, that I believe in our generation will unlock the door of demonstration and what we are very sure and can very confidently say is the last hour. I believe this attitude shift, the shift in the spirit that we sense can be summarized in a single word. That this one word will make all the difference. This single word is the word, I believe, it's the key that will unlock the door to the demonstration that God desires to work in His church in this last hour. There is much power in a word. A single word has very much power. The Bible has much to say about the power of words. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, in the power of your words. By our words we are condemned or justified, and that we will give account for every idle word. It's being recorded. There is one word that will unlock this miracle ministry of Jesus Christ in this city and every city beyond in this generation. It is John chapter 2 that I have heard preached since I was a child. Fifth generation Pentecost. I've heard the water turned to wine preached. And I have heard it preached over and over again that God, He always saves the best for he always saves the best for last. However, that is wrong. The devil wants us to believe that the best is last. The devil wants us to believe that somewhere at the end of a rainbow, the best is waiting on us. However, in John chapter 2 and verse 10, I think it would be wise to put it on the screen because many of you are looking at me as though I just preached that the Trinity was okay. So let us read the words of Jesus and saith unto them, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until the best isn't last. The best. Oh, come on, somebody. Some of you are procrastinating your best life and saying, well, I'll get it tomorrow. But I've just come with a little simple word. And if you're waiting for the great revelatory pack point on point three, I went ahead and put the good part on the front end. The best is now. The best the church has ever been is tonight. The best life you could ever live is. I need somebody to shout now. I said you need to shout now. And so, and so it is that it is when he said now that he unlocked the miracle ministries of Jesus Christ. This is a trap from the adversary, from the enemy that would like to confine the miracles, the wonders, the signs, and the supernatural confined to the past. There are people who are bound to the past. Nay, I say, Romans 8 and 37, that we are, we're not just conquerors, we are more than conquerors. Through him that love us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities nor powers, nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor depth nor other creature 
shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It is here that we list all the things that could, cannot separate us from being more than a conqueror, from walking in victory, from walking in the ability to step into what God has for us. Height cannot do it, depth cannot do it, angels, principalities, powers, things that are present, or things that are to come. However, one thing that's missing from the list of things that can hinder you from walking in victory is past. Because the past can hinder the present. And there, is so, there are so many in Pentecost, specifically multi-generationals. I was raised in Holland. There was no one when we got there. Everybody in my church was first generation. So it's new. I'm adapting to pastoring five and six and even seventh generation apostolics. Uh, and I find the trick of the enemy is to trap them uh, in the concept, in the mindset that 1992 was as good as it was ever going to be. And if we could just sing the songs of 93, and if we could just sing like they did, and oh, if we could just have the preaching like then, uh, if the good old days, hey, come on, if you are, are caught up in the good old days, you'll never conquer this day. For this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day is the day this is the day come on you want to know why you're always sad because you're trapped uh, believing the best has already been lived uh, but the devil is a liar this is the day i'm gonna rejoice uh, that now is the best oh i just wish i had somebody that would high five themselves real hard and let the devil know I'm not waiting. Come on. I'm not looking in the rear view mirror of my history. The be Come on. The best days of this church are... They didn't happen yesterday. They didn't happen when we walked in this building for the first time. The best is right now. Right now. 2021. It's here and it's here now. Woo. You'll get depressed. You'll get depressed thinking... It's, Job got depressed because the Bible says, he says, I've looked before me. He said, and I've looked behind me. He said, he wasn't before me. He said, he wasn't behind me. He said, so I tried on the right. He said, I tried it on the right, and then I tried it on the left. He said, I tried it everywhere, and, and he was nowhere to be found, and I'm left to wonder, well, God, where were you? And God said, I was right there where he was he was looking forward he was looking back hey job stop waiting on tomorrow and stop hoping in yesterday stop looking to the right and stop looking to the left and young people make up your mind that this is our i don't have anything else to preach other than tell this church that this is your hour this is the hour of the church. The greatest revival was not in our history. The greatest revival of the church is now. When I first became pastor, the church I pastored, and they elected me, they told me, oh, everybody told me, that it would take five to seven years before I would be officially the pastor. They said, well, you have the title, but you won't officially be the pastor for five to seven years. And I said, my God, I sure hope Jesus doesn't come back and all these people don't have a pastor. They're going to go to hell. So I just went ahead about three months in. I could feel them all kind of, you know, they're like on a five-year corona break. And I get up and I say, hold on now. I know that's what they say, but I don't have five years to wait to be your pastor. We're going to go ahead and make this announcement. I'm your pastor tonight, and we're going to have revival tonight. And if you want to go somewhere and wait five years, you can go somewhere else and pray Jesus doesn't come back so you don't go to hell. But come on, somebody. I've just come to tell this church, you got a new pastor, and you don't have five years. The time is now. I said the time is now for the pastor's vision to go forth. The time is now for us to have the revival that God has for us. The time is now. Come on. 
And since that church bought in, we've baptized 786 people in the name of Jesus. We've tripled our attendance, given over $3 million to global missions. You know why? Because I got some people to believe. You don't have to wait. You don't have to look back. You can believe it now. I, I just wish somebody praised God like you really believed it, was, it wasn't going to happen. But like you believed it is happening. It's now. Somebody shout now. What do you think is a good title for this message? Congratulate yourself. You just titled a conference message. Come on. High five yourself. Say, man, I, we're, we're all in unity. I said, we're all in unity. It needs to happen now. The, the harvest is linked to what we say. But it's also linked to what we do not say. In Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 10, he says, say not. Look at your neighbor and say, don't say. Don't talk like this. Look at your name and say, don't talk like this. Say, it's a sin. It'd be just like a woman cutting her hair. It'd be just like, come on, be just like a man wearing pants so skinny. You be, be just, a, come on, somebody. It'd be, it'd be just like a man acting like a woman. It'd be just like a man becoming a woman. It, 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 you, 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 you. Sin. I know, I got you excited right there. But you know what's just as much of a sin? Say not what is the cause that former days were better than these. If you go around saying, yesterday was better, oh, I wish it was like yesterday. Oh, I, you might as well whack your hair off, put a miniskirt on. Because the same Bible that says you ought to have long hair, ladies, says don't be romanticizing the past. Live in the moment. Grab hold of the day and say it's ours. Revival is now. If you really believed it, you'd be twirling and dancing and shouting. If you really believed healing was now, you'd say don't let me be sick no more. It's right now. It's never going to get better. Woo! I got to remind you, God's word doesn't go down. He never gets less. His light doesn't get dimmer. Well, I don't believe all that. I think it was pretty good in the past. Ask Lot's wife how that worked out. I said, ask Lot's wife how it looks looking at yesterday. Hoping you can turn today into what you had then. No. No man who puts his hand to the plow. You can't look back. Get your eyes off yesterday. Today is the day of salvation. And miracles and healings and signs and wonders and so I have learned that if the adversary cannot keep us confined romanticizing our yesterdays convinced that the best has already happened that he will do his utmost best to keep us bound to the hope that the best will happen later that 10 or 20 or 30 years from now we're convinced that then, well, once I get through the trial. Let me, let me go ahead and tell you what's going to happen when you get through this trial. There's going to be another trial. And you know what's going to happen when you get through that trial? There's going to be another trial. And the devil loves to have you sitting on your pew, young man, saying, well, when I get through this, when my family conflict gets through, then I'll, I'll start living for God. Then I'll step into what God has called me to do. Then I'll do the ministry that God has and the anointing that God is on my life. I'll praise him then. I'll do it then. I, I'll do it. Now, somebody shout now. now. I thought you'd get more excited about your sermon title. Somebody shout now. So there are some things that revivalists don't say. We don't say the past was better than today. However, we are also, there's some other things we're not allowed to say. John chapter 4 and verse 35. 
And Jesus says, here's what you're not allowed to say. You're not allowed to say the past was better. You're not, you can't be doing that. It's not, it's not true. And Jesus said, say not. There are four months, and then cometh the harvest. He said, you're not allowed to say yesterday is better. And he said, you're also not allowed to say, I'll delay it till tomorrow. He said, you can't live in yesterday, and you can't live in tomorrow. It's Jesus Christ the same yesterday. I'm thankful he's the same yesterday, but really, who cares? Because I can't get to yesterday, and I'm glad he's the same tomorrow. But I might not make it to tomorrow, but thank God the most important word in that Bible verse, he's the same yesterday. Mm, I said he's the same yesterday, and... He's the same right now. I'm just going to go ahead and speak it. Somebody that's sick in your body tonight, you're going to be healed, and it's not going to be on Sunday. It's going to happen now. Somebody's going to be refilled with the Holy Ghost, not on Sunday night. It's going to happen. Somebody shout now. I heard a, heard a story about an old man. He's talking to his friends. He said, man, I'm aiming to, I'm aiming to go to France one day. Oh, man, that'd be great. He said, I'm aiming one day to, to go fishing on the, on, uh, out the deep sea fishing. I'm aiming to do this, and I'm aiming to do that. And I'm aiming. Finally, one of his friends looked at him and said, Fire! I've come to Raleigh and Durham, North Carolina to say, Fire! Stop aiming at revival. Stop pointing the gun at it and pull the trigger and let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it bigger. Let's do it greater than it's ever been done before. God isn't going to get more powerful than he is right now. God's not going to be more kind than he is right now. God's not moody. I said he's not going to get over his bad day, wake up and bless us now. No, ladies and gentlemen, it's right now. It's right now. Stop waiting and fire. Somebody shout now. The adversary is not afraid of us living in the past. He's not afraid of you living in the future. He's afraid some young man, some believer, will believe that they can lay their hands on the sick now. That they can have revival in their cities now. Well, someday I'll pray. Someday I'll fast. Someday I'll get involved in ministry. Someday I'll do what God has called me to do. Come on, right now. You don't have to feel bad. It was in the Bible too. Lazarus, Jesus' best friend, has died. Jesus shows up, and Martha and Mary, Martha's mad. Jesus, she says, if you'd have been here when he got sick, you could have healed him. If you'd have showed up then... It could have happened in our yesterday. If it just happened back when President Trump was Trump, uh, president. If it had happened back before we had to wear these stupid face, sorry, don't want to offend you. Wonderful face mask. If, if it had happened back, come on, whatever it is, I don't, I don't want to get into all that. But if you want to know, you can watch live streams from my church. Well, you know, our hope is gone now. We got this administration. Our hope is gone now because we got... No, 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 no. He, and Jesus looked at her and he said, Your brother is going to live again. Jesus, kind of like me, standing up here saying, You're going to have revival now. But Martha was like most of y'all. And it's like saying, Yeah. She said, I know. Brother Tuttle, I know it's going to happen. Oh, I know it's going to be great in the resurrection. I know it, it'll be better tomorrow. I know our only hope of a better is later on down the road. I know that somewhere in the future uh, it'll happen then. 
Jesus didn't say sometime in the future. He looked at her and said, your brother can live now. Just like he's looking at this generation and he's saying through this man of God tonight, it can happen now. What would really happen if you truly believed it, Martha? What would really happen if we really grasp that it can happen now? He said, I am the resurrection. He didn't say, I will be or I was. He said, I am. I am. And he that cometh to God must. You must be born again of water and spirit. Somebody say, hallelujah. You've got to be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. Uh, you must be born of the Spirit. And when you are, you will speak with other tongues is the initial sign uh, of that Spirit being pushed into your life. Uh, that's a must. But there's some other things. There's some other must. You must believe. And you must believe that He I said, if you're just believing he was or he will be, you're not in the Bible. Come on, somebody. You're just as wrong as being baptized in the Trinity. you got to believe he is. What if you believed he is just like you did Jesus' name baptism? I guarantee you the next time your coworker said they had a headache, you wouldn't offer them a Tylenol. You'd lay your hands on them and say in the name of Jesus, you can be healed because God is. God, somebody shout, he is. Mm. There's not one time in the Bible that says God can. Nowhere in the Bible does it say God can. 157 times it says God is. And you must believe that God, what? He is what? It doesn't say what he is just says you got to believe he is so what is he whatever you need when is he what he is right now he is whatever you need and he's that right now you need a miracle, he's a miracle worker. You need a way maker, he's a way maker. You need a doctor, he's a doctor. You need a lawyer, he's a lawyer. You need a friend, he's a friend. You need a father, he's a father. You need a mother, he's a mother. You need some hope, he's, I wish I had somebody with a need in the building that would say my God is. He is. Right now, high five your neighbor and say now. Mm, now, she, now do it again like you know. Now, now high five the neighbor you had to ignore and you just hurt their feelings. High five them and say he is. He is a, he's not just a, a present help. He's a very present help. devil wants us to just sit there in our pew living in this fantasy world that someday one day he'll do it again when when it's gonna happen oh devil's favorite song there's gonna be a revival in the land there's gonna be a devil's like sing it again there's gonna be a revival 35 years later there's gonna be a revival I am sick and tired don't come prophesy anymore about revivals that's coming. I don't want to hear it. I'm done. I didn't come with a prophetic word for your future. I came with a present word for your now. And I've come to tell you, every prophecy that's been prophesied, it is upon your shoulders. For upon us, the ends of time have come. The next tick could be the trumpet. I said the next tick could be the trumpet. And the time is now. Young man, it's now. It's now that we pack the building out. It's now that you pray your friend through. It's now that your co-worker gets the Holy Ghost. It's now that you get on the outreach team. 
It's now that you start driving a van or a bus. It's now, now, now. Oh, come on, you can feel a little resistance. Y'all wanted me to blow your minds. I didn't come with mind-boggling revelation. I came with a word from heaven. I said I came with a word from heaven to tell you your revival's here and it's time to step into it. Our generation is the generation that will see it. Woo! Well, I'm just gonna wait and, you know... I'm just going to hold off and hang out and, you know, I can get, well, I'm just not the fast type. Brother Tuttle, you got a lot of energy. I'm just kind of the slower type. You get your arm cut off, boom, boom, arm blown off. You go to the doctor, you sure don't crawl. You run. You get into the ER and the doctor's like, well, let's see here. When do I have time on my calendar? You know what? Calendar's full. I'll just put it for sometime in the future. You're having a heart attack. And the ER doctor says, man, I'm sorry. You know what? I got a lunch break. I'll be back tomorrow. You look at that doctor and you say, you get your little knife, you get the anesthesiologist, and you're going to do it right. If you can have that kind of passion about your arm and about your heart, why can't you have that kind of fur, fire and fervor about the church? I say, let's have revival. The generation we live in, their arms are blown off. Their hearts are messed up. Their minds have been blown. And they don't need a church to sit around saying, well, we'll see when we can fit you in to the next revival meeting. We'll wait till East Coast Conference. Baby, it's now. And they ask Added to the church daily. The time is. I said the time is. Now. God's not waiting for him to get strong. I said he's not waiting for the day he's going to get more rested. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on us. And the Lord appeared in 2 Chronicles 7 and 12 to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have... Y'all can stay up here if you want. I have to stay in the whole time. And scream. And then they give me like a communion cup here. Thank God I got three of them. Everything's bigger in Texas. I'm just not used to these mini water bottles. Excuse me. Whew. Don't come up here and get any of it. I don't see any of y'all sweating. Y'all are laughing, but at my church, we have the good church meter. The good church meter is this. You got to take your hand, take your hand, wipe the forehead. Now look at it. Is it glistening? If it ain't glistening, we ain't having good church. Mine is glistening. That means I'm going to have something happen in my life. I, see. Come on. Halls. You know, I got halls in my backpack back at the hotel room because I plan to scream my voice out. I got extra shirts. You know why? Because I plan. Now, there we go. Bring me a whole bunch of them. Because <laughs> I plan to sweat my shirt out. I come to church to have church. Why don't somebody just run or dance or shout until you're at least half as sweaty as I am? You shouldn't let your preacher get more sweaty than you. You shouldn't let your preacher scream louder than you. My goodness. I thought I was in a Pentecostal church. But I'm making you nervous. 
Because I'm not talking about what God's going to do. I'm talking about what God wants to do. And y'all are all tight and nervous because you've been told so much what's going to happen that you're in shock that God can actually do it right now. He's not waiting on your grandpa. And he's not going to do it with your kids, young men. He's going to do it with you. I'm almost done. And, and the Lord appeared to Solomon by night. This familiar passage of scripture. And said unto him, I've heard thy prayer and have chosen which place? He chose this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. God has chosen this place. I believe with all of my heart that God's anointing, God's favor is on this place. And while each of us are the temple of the Holy Ghost, I believe that even in this day, God has set aside specific places in the world, in cities where his favor and his eye is focused. And I believe that the first Pentecostal church of Durham, North Carolina, has the eye of God. And that his eye, his heart, his mind is tuned to this place. He chose do you believe there's something special about this place? Do I have anybody here that got the Holy Ghost in this place? Do I have anybody here that you were baptized in the name of Jesus in this place? That's why when we come to this place, we dress up. See, come on, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I said, that's why we dress up when we come to this place. If you can't afford a suit and tie, you put your best clothes on because you're coming to this place. I'm off my notes, but what's up with the casualing down of Christianity? I, I, I told my church, you ain't ever going to see me in blue jeans with holes. The President of the United States gets in a suit and a tie to give the State of the Union. If the President can dress up in a suit and tie to give the State of a Union that will crumble... I can dress in a suit and tie to deliver the state of a kingdom that's eternal. I've come to tell you, the state of the kingdom is well. It is stronger than it's ever been. It's greater than it's ever been. The young people are more filled with fire than they ever have been. It's a good time to be a part of the kingdom of God. You gotta have this place. I said you gotta have the church. Something about the church place. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Come on, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall... Do you want that kind of blessing? Do you want that in your life? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. If you want that, then here you got to obey the last part. I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Thank God for this place. Thank God for this place. I've got faith in this place. He says in the next verse 13, And if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name. I wasn't here last night, but I can almost guarantee the bishop preached about prayer. Shall humble themselves and, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. I have faith in this place and I have faith in the power of prayer. I said if there's some young men that can learn how to pray, the only hope the United States of America has is that people get down and begin to pray. I said the only hope we've got are some young men, some young ladies, some elders, some mamas and daddies and grandmas and grandpas getting in the, on their face and praying.
I have faith in this place. I have faith in prayer. Next verse, let's read it. Because the prayer verse 14 has a next verse. Let's read it together. Stop. I said, let's read, let's start, let's, let's start over. Now. When? Now. When? Now. When? Now. now. We've got faith in prayer. We've got faith in the place. We just need faith in the present. What if you believe the now as much as you believe the prayer? What if you believe the now as much as you believe the place? I'll tell you what would happen. What you praying would start happening. The key that unlocks the door to the prayer you've been praying is that you believe that it will not happen next year, but you I would to God, there'd be somebody right now that would give God a praise. Like what you've been praying, like you believe that what you've been praying is going to happen now. Now, now. Right now, his eyes are open. Right now, his ears are attentive to the prayer. Right now, right now. Verse 16. For have I chosen and sent. There's an anointing and a power that you can't unlock unless you'll start living, believing that right now, that right now, Pastor Urshan, I was sitting on that airplane. This was my, this was my Wednesday night Bible study. And I had something real fancy. I normally break glasses or kill fish. And I was laying there and had my little fancy sermon. Or maybe I'll do it at camp meeting. Maybe not. And I was landing into Durham. I looked out the window and the Lord said, tell him, it's now. So I can't. I'm sorry, I wish I could do the fancy one. But I've just got to tell you what Jesus told me to tell everybody in this house. Stop waiting. Stop looking, stop hoping for what will come, and start doing it today, 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 today. All their lives, they had been raised for thousands of years in Sunday school taught that with stammering lips in another tongue, I will speak to my people. That this is the rest wherewith you'll cause the weary to rest. The next Sunday school lesson was, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And they had been taught for year after year. Sunday school class from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade, through youth class, into the hyphen class, on up into the young marriage class, up into the senior saints, that, that the day was coming that stammering lips would and tongues were going to be poured out. And then, in Acts chapter 2 and verse 4, the sound of the Holy Ghost blows and they begin to speak with other tongues uh, as the Spirit gives them utterance. Uh, and then those very people that through Sunday school, through their teen years, uh, had heard about the prophecy and been told that it was coming. Uh, and multi-generational, one God believers, uh, now they come and only mock. They needed a preacher to open the door and rise and say, Ladies and gentlemen, this is that. So I've come from Vider, Texas. I open the door. I rise, stand behind the desk to declare to this generation, this is that. The end of time is upon us. Behold, in the last days, saith the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon Oh, you can't get any more last than last. We're the last generation, and the end of time is upon us, and it's time to have revival like never before. Oh, I'm almost done. Well, preacher, 
you know, I, I believe we're going to have this great revival, and I'm thankful we're raising this money and sending it over to Africa, Korea, and Kazakhstan. But I pastored just in a little country church out in the middle, really nowhere, really. 2021 started, and I told my church, we're going to have revival now. We got the pretty building. We got the nice pews. We got the awesome pastor. <laughs> Said it's time. Now. We started baptizing people. We baptized, we've baptized, of course, 2020. We baptized almost every Sunday, even through the coronavirus. That was good. But last Sunday, we baptized three in the name of Jesus. Monday night, two people baptized in Jesus' name, one filled with the Holy Ghost. That's good, Monday night. Tuesday. I'm not talking about next year. I'm not just talking about 2020. I'm talking about 2021. Tuesday, I'm in Tampa. I had to do something there. I'm sitting in my rental car, and I get a text. Ding, it's a picture. You can put it up there. I gave it to him. I forwarded it to him. Put my picture up there. Hopefully they got it. Boy, I got a bald spot. That ain't my head. That's 16, no, 1621. I got the date wrong underneath there. That's lymphoma. She sent the next picture. Send it. Put the next picture up. That was Tuesday. Well, someday it'll happen. No. Go ahead and live in your someday fantasy land. I'm going to go ahead and do it right now. Go ahead and procrastinate your purpose to um, some, some unforeseen day in your tomorrow. But I'm going to do it now. Go ahead and hope that maybe just happenstance we get somebody else in office. But I'm going to do it now. Woo! Wednesday night, we baptized three people in the name of Jesus. Uh, Thursday, I'm having family night. Someone, the phone goes off. Ding. We need to baptize somebody in Jesus' name. It's Thursday night. I went down to the church last Thursday night, baptized him in the name of Jesus. Friday night, I'm, I'm packing all my stuff. Trying to, you know, look real good for you guys. Ding, phone goes off, says, Pastor, we need you to come down. We're going to baptize somebody else in the name of Jesus. I land in Durham. Ding. Phone goes off. Pastor, we're baptizing people in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and baptize on Sunday. But I made up my mind. We're going to have revival now. We're going to have revival. And if it can happen in Vider, Texas, it can happen in North Carolina. If it can, come on somebody. It can happen in your church. It can happen in your home. We're not talking about Africa. We're not talking about the days of the 90s, the 80s, the 70s, and the 60s. 2021. Revival. Somebody shout now. Somebody shout right now. How many of you are ready to see it happen tonight? I'm thankful for shouting, dancing. I'm all about it. I'm a big fan. But I believe we can shout and dance about some miracles that take place. I believe that God wants to heal people in 2021. I believe God wants to set people free from drugs and alcohol in 2021. I believe that God wants to set you free from the bondage of sin. And I think and I believe and know he wants to do it tonight. Tonight is the night. Right now is the time. Right now is the time. Every young man and woman that feels called to the ministry wants you to come to the front now. Run now quickly, quickly, quickly. Amen. If you feel a call of God on your life. I'm not just talking about pulpit ministry. I'm talking about ministry. If you feel like God has called you to minister, it should be everybody. Amen. Each of you have been called. 
Amen. The Bible says that you'll lay your hands on the sick. And they're not talking about the gift of healing or miracles. We're just talking about being a believer. That if you're a believer in you, you have the power to lay your hands. Uh, amen. And there are those that will operate in the gifts of the Spirit. And, that, and I believe that God wants to open the windows of heaven uh, and release that into this generation like never before. Uh, I believe that now is the time. Uh, I believe that God wants to do it like He never has before. Uh, that He that he's going to pour out a harvest and a revival on this generation like never before. It's happening right now. Come on, God has brought, I know, I know there's other churches here, but to this church I speak, God has brought you the man. You have the bishop, and now is the time. Now is your time for harvest and revival. I wonder if I could get some young men to lay your hand on another young man and begin to operate. If you're here sick in your body and you want God to heal you, you can leave sick or you can believe that God can do it right now you can hope for another big name preacher some high dollar prophet or you can say I refuse to live sick another day I will be healed and it will happen now let it happen in my life oh God let it happen in my home oh God come on I refuse to believe that my marriage has to live in constant conflict that someday date in the unforeseen future after months and years and hours with counseling uh, that our marriage gets better why not just believe uh, that a moving of the Holy Ghost could sweep into your life uh, and your marriage could be healed tonight uh, why not believe uh, that marital problems uh, that the spirit of divorce uh, could be broken now uh, why not believe uh, that now pornography addictions can be broken uh, why not believe that now uh, signs and wonders can happen uh, come on if you're in this house uh, battling physical ailments, uh, come on, whatever they may be, uh, you ought to find somebody uh, and ask them if they're a believer. Uh, ask them to lay their hands upon your head uh, and then ask them to speak over you. Uh, and I believe uh, with everything inside of me uh, that you will be healed now. Uh, it is here. Uh, it's in the room. Uh, the hour, the time uh, is now. It is now. Lift up your voice. Uh, Come on, I'm not just preaching to pep you up. I'm not just preaching to make you feel good. Uh, I'm preaching what the Lord has given me for this generation and for this very hour. Uh, it is now. I believe uh, that we are near. Uh, that of course we're nearer than we've ever been, but it is. Uh, it is on us. Uh, hey, it is upon us. Uh, let us not delay. Uh, let us not push back. Hallelujah. That which God has ordained for this very hour. We are his people, the people of the name who have been set apart. Hallelujah. Called out unto him. Now begin to operate. Now begin to utilize the power that is within you. Begin now. Speak it now. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah! That's pretty good praying, but I want you to pray now with a fervor that everything you are speaking is going to happen as you speak it. Pray like the words that are coming out of your mouth are forming life in the instant that they leave your lips. Speak now with a boldness and a confidence that at the very tip of your tongue, once the word, the syllable, the sentence has come to a conclusion and the period is placed at its ending, that then it happens, not tomorrow, not after the sun rises in a new day, but tonight, tonight, purpose is found. Tonight, hope is restored. Tonight, healing is brought to the bodies. 
now. Now. Now, 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 now. Somebody shout Jesus. Oh, hold on a moment. Hold on. Kanda, hold on. Just one moment. One moment. Whew. On my way to the church, I called my wife and I said, I feel to do something, but I think it's odd. I've never done this before. I said, I feel like there will be people there that are connected to people that are not there that are sick, that are not well. I said, I feel to have them call them on the phone and that we begin to pray for them over the phone in this building. Brother Holmes just came up to me. He's got a gentleman on FaceTime. If you're here right now and you know of somebody that needs a miracle in their life, I want you to grab your phone right now. Grab it, grab it. We're going to call them and we are going to pray right now. And we're about to pray. What, what is the name? Brother Blakely, he's on, the, on a ventilator. He's on a ventilator. There's a man on a ventilator right now here on FaceTime. If you need, come on, if you got a dad, a grandfather, a grandmother, come on, if you've got somebody you know that's sick right now, God spoke this to me in my car. My wife said, you need to do it. I forgot. He came up to me and God quickened my memory. God wants to do something that's beyond this place right now. Come on, there's miracles that are going to manifest themselves all across this nation. We're about to speak life over Brother Blakely and over every individual in need. Why don't we extend our hands towards this man? Father, in the name of Jesus, by the authority of your word and the power of the Spirit of God, we speak life now. Healing virtue. Open the lungs. Open the airways. Heal this body. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and let it happen now. Come on, church, begin to say it, say it now. Come on, you ought to connect with them however you need to. Let the miracles of this building transcend and stretch themselves out. Come on in the Holy Ghost. Come on, I can see rays of light shooting from this building. I see a rays of light shooting out of the top of this building. And they're landing all around in different homes. Come on, I see it in the Holy Ghost. I see them landing in hospitals and light going through the rooms. Miracles are happening tonight. Come on. Come on, apostolics. Let's be apostolic in worship. Let's be apostolic in word. Let's be apostolic in acts and deeds. And wonder. And wonder. And wonders and miracles. They're in the room right now. There's miracles happening.
somebody shout yes. Shout victory. Now shout it like you got it. Shout victory. Still didn't get it. Shout it like you got it. Somebody shout now. Now hold on. How do you spell now? I need some real smart people now. I know you're not from Texas, but can you spell now backwards? Because when you get a now attitude, you get a victory attitude. It's not a, an attitude of defeatism, and it's an attitude of winning, of victory. Look at your neighbor and say, we win. Now look at him and say, we win now. The victory is, I said the victory is now. I need you to get with your neighbor and get somebody by the hand. Come on. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us. See, there's some kind of magnification. You got to get somebody with you. Let us exalt his name together. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We are about to, we are about to shout. But you know, God, he's kind of all about the details. And he tells us to shout, but he doesn't just tell us how to shout. He tells us how to shout. He said, I am picky. I don't want just a woo-hoo or a yee-haw. He said, when you shout unto me, it has to sound like victory. With a voice, with the sound, hold on, of triumph. That means, come on, that means it comes somewhere in here. Not here. You got to put, you got let go of that neighbor's hand. Put your hand right here. Put your hand right here. Mm, <laughs> out of your belly. Now we're going to shout and it's going to come from here. It's going to be the sound of a victory now. The enemy has tried to tell this church to tell us that we have been defeated. But not only are we going to have victory now, we are going to have it greater than we ever could have imagined. Are you ready? Your hand is in someone's hand. The other hand's on your belly on the count of three. You are going to shout and it's going to sound like victory. It's going to sound like an overcomer. On the count of three, one, two, three. How? Everything that have breath. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah.
victory in this house right now? Does anybody believe you have a right now opportunity to get your breakthrough? Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says to shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Now hold on. This is, this is very much in the Bible. The Bible says that when David defeated Goliath, that all of Israel shouted unto God and gave God glory. And they overcame the Philistines. The Bible says that when Gideon blew the trumpet and they broke the pitchers and the candles shone out, that they shouted the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. On the seventh time around, on the seventh day, Joshua said, blow the trumpet and shout because the Lord has given you the victory. But all of that was a foreshadowing of another day when it's not going to be Gideon and it's not going to be Joshua and it's not going to be David but the Lord himself is going to descend from heaven with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and there's going to be a shout I want you to take about 60 seconds and I want you to shout unto God shout for your church shout for your youth group shout for your family Shout for your backsliding friends in the name of Jesus. in this house I know you can feel that breakthrough I know you can feel those chains falling off in the name of Jesus somebody shout
Let's give him glory tonight. Let's give him glory. All over this building, I want you to lift your hands. I want you to lift your voice. Let's call on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We've heard a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody has received a word from the Lord tonight. Somebody has been touched by the hand of God. I don't even know how to shut a service like this down. I'm not even going to try. Hallelujah. God has spoken to people's hearts. Take this home with you. Help your pastor. Help your church. Now. Somebody say now. Say it again. Say now. Now's the time to teach that Bible study. Now's the time to knock on those doors. Now's the time to lay hands on people in Jesus' name. Now's the time to have revival. Now's the time to believe God. Now, now, now. Hallelujah. We have a meal down in the gymnasium for those of you that can join us. Amen. One last time, let's lift our hands to heaven. Let's give God thanks for what he's done. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Thank you for this word. Thank you for this beautiful spirit. Thank you for the outpouring of your grace in this sanctuary. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you want to continue to pray, you can continue to pray. We love you. We appreciate you. We look forward to seeing you at Nexus next year. Be at church on Sunday. Have a great move of God at home. We love you and appreciate you. God bless you tonight.